Let's put these two methods into action one at a time, of course, and we'll start with changing the VTP domain name to a non-existent domain and then going back to the original. So we're on switch two, we'll hop over to switch three. We'll run show VTP status. And you see the config revision number is 12. Now in this case, when we do these two things, when we reset it to zero uh, and then rejoin the domain each time, the config revision number should end up being 12 because when it gets an ad from two basically saying, here's all the VLANs, uh, it will, the switch will not increment its own CRN at that point. So let's go ahead first off and get it set down to zero because it's not officially a change, it's more of an, it's another advertisement type. So let's try VTP domain route, you get a little message and I think we're gonna get another one here in a second, a little side effect. Wait for it, because as soon as I start typing, it's gonna come up. Wait for it, okay. Run show VTP status and there's the message. <laughs> Should have hit the elevator button one more time. We'll see that message in a moment. But you can see that we have successfully changed over to the route VTP domain and also the configuration revision number is at zero. So we've correctly initialized the CRN. Now you'd put it into the network and we can rejoin CCNA and we won't have any kind of revision issues. This is a DTP message, obviously, our dynamic trunking protocol. And if you have a VTP domain mismatch suddenly on the end of your trunks or before you have a trunk, you're not gonna be able to perform trunk negotiation. So we should still have our trunk and by the time we fix this, and DTP can do whatever it wants. We see the domain name change, everything looks good there. And let's go ahead and run show VTP status. And there's your revision number of 12, exactly what we expected to see. That would have been the number on it coming in from two. And when a switch first comes online like that, it will not increment its own CRN after receiving that particular kind of ad. So we've got that ready to go. What was our other method? Remember what it was? Yeah, setting it to transparent mode. Good idea to know both of these. You know, change it to a non-existent domain, not just another one in the same network, but a non-existent domain, and change it back to the original. Now let's try change VTP mode from server to transparent and then back to server. And we got a little confirm there. And let's run show VTP status. And we can see that it is indeed at zero. So let's go ahead and set it back. Also, if you're having some weirdness, we talked about transparent mode earlier, and it's a little weird, come on. Um, if you're having a little problem with VLANs getting advertised, that kind of thing, just run this, and if you're running transparent mode, that is probably the entire issue right there. Right now, let's go ahead and run show VTP status. And you can see the config revision number is back to 12. So we got our message from switch two and everything's just fine. So that's how we initialize the CRN. Now we're gonna step a little off the beaten path and we're gonna initialize this whole thing. We're gonna initialize the entire switch. And one particular file, actually, you know what? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Write erase, okay? That's how we erase the config. And it even says erasing the NVRAM file system. We'll remove all configuration files. That's where our star up file is. Do I want to continue? And confirm is in those brackets. So if I hit enter right now, it'll accept that default answer. And it's complete. And now I'm gonna reload it. And we're good to go. So let me go ahead and pause the video and I'm gonna wait for it to reload and it'll come back up and it should be in startup mode. And here we are. Now I want to show you around a little bit in the boot process. A couple things is we don't reload switches a whole lot. Obviously we don't need to look at all that. But you can see the flash file there at the top and it's going to name what file you're uncompressing and install just now. That's what all those at signs are. And those power on self tests we talked about in another section. Sorry about that. You can see a couple of them named here. So you can actually see some of them being run. There's the cryptography warning we get. And at the very bottom of all this, by golly, are one prompt after another to go into setup mode, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just say no to that. And how are those VLANs still there? Oh, how are these VLANs still there? 
I did a right erase. I got rid of them. I thought. And, you know, the whole startup config file is gone. You know, if we run a, uh, you know, show run right now, what are we going to see? We're going to see all the defaults. I mean, everything we might have had on here, you know, is gone. And yet the VLANs, the VLANs survive. There they are. How did that happen? Well, here's how it happened. This little file right here called VLAN.dat. It's even fun to say, VLAN.dat. Well, that's the file that actually has, as you'd expect just from the name, all of the VLAN information in it. So we're looking at that, and I mean, we even got the time screwed up. We're back in 1993. We're not getting our time from anywhere. We erased everything, man. But we still got these VLANs because we still have this file. If you're truly initializing a switch to get rid of everything in non-volatile RAM, run write erase. But then you got to get rid of this file, or otherwise your old VLANs are still going to be there. It'll mess you up the first time you see it. So how do we do that? Well, we'll do a write erase again, just for fun. And you see the little confirm you get there. Initialize the geometry of NVRAM. I love that phrase. So we've got that. Now how do we get rid of this file? Well, you think it's easy because it's the delete command, but you got to be careful about how you accept their prompts. And it's just DLAN, delete vlan.dat. Okay, do you want to delete file name, delete the file with the file name, and it even has vlan.dat in the brackets. So um, you hit that, and you know, then it's going to say, do you want to delete flash, slash vlan.dat? And did it really delete or not? Did I do it correctly? Maybe I did. Maybe I'm just trying to fool you. Let's have a look at flash. And you can see that it's actually gone. So if you just accept the first question, accept what's in the brackets, and then just say either yes or confirm for the next question, you're fine. That's gold. Here's what you can't do. If you try, if you run delete vlan.dat and you get that prompt, delete file name, you know what your impulse is to say yes. That's what I want to do. But if you hit Y here, notice what it did on the next line. It's saying, oh, you want to delete a file named Y instead. So for the love of heaven or whatever you want to love, don't answer Y to this first question. Because if you do, again, it makes the assumption, hey, that person is trying to delete a file named Y. Instead, when you do delete VLAN.dat, just accept the first prompt, and then you can say yes to the second one if you want to. Okay, and you see what happens when you do that. If you try to delete a file named Y, you're going to get this message. And the first thing you see, it's like, wait a minute, you know, I was trying to get rid of VLAN.dat. Again, just don't answer that first question with yes, and you'll be fine. Now let's do a reload, not a reloady, that's known Flanders. And we will confirm, and I will pause the video, and we'll come back when it's done. And we're back at the ranch. We see that we're being prompted for that dialogue. We don't want to have that. And now we run show VLAN brief. The VLANs are gone. So you just got to get rid of that VLAN.dat file if you really want to initialize the switch and get rid of the VLANs. Just be careful how you delete it. Coming up next, we're going to talk about these versions. We've seen versions. We've got two switches that run versions 1 through 3, another switch that runs versions 1 and 2. We're going to talk about why you should care, and then we'll talk about some passwords as well to do handle those versions, and that is all coming up next.